so since we haven't done this before, I will let everybody know how, how we're going to proceed. So what we'll do is we will have Rob go through the history according to the city. Rob Patterson's our attorney. And then uh, counsel, when he's done, you can ask questions. And then the Barkers and their representative, any representation they have, you'll have a chance to go through your side of the story and the council can ask questions and then we'll go into del deliberation mode at which time the council can ask anybody any, any question and then uh, we'll make a decision before six. This is an administrative action. It's not a legislative session so we can't change anything. We can't change the rules so we'll just have to look at the rules as they are and see how um, that we can apply them. Um, so anyway, any questions? Barker's, you, is that clear? Okay. So, Mayor, when you said this is administrative, what you're stating is we need to go off exactly what our code is in the end, because we can't make any modifications based off what that, the code is. Okay. Correct. We have to, because that would be a council action with where we'd have to change something. So this is just an administrative process. Um, and, and there is, we do have some discretion within how we operate. For example, like we, we could have, it could have been an infraction or a, a misdemeanor, and we could have or we could have done an abatement and asked for an abatement. We didn't do any of those things. We're just trying to work this out as best we can. Aaron, are we, okay, we're ready to go. So we'll start off with Rob, uh, who will go through the history. Um, you can come up to the mic, Rob, or I suppose you could just sit there in the chair, whatever. Actually, that's probably better. Let's, let's do that. Mayor, City Council, thank you, and Parkers as well for being here. Um, I'm just going to go through, as the mayor said quickly, the uh, background and why we're here. Uh, this is an appeal from a decision that was made by staff, uh, ultimately by the city administrator, Nathan Crane, regarding certain trees in the Canterbury North Park and along the one of the public trails there. Um, there was a staff report that was prepared that I prepared um, that was part of the agenda today. Uh, that also report includes the decision from uh, city administrator Nathan Crane as well as the documents and pictures and other information provided by the Barkers as well as some background information. Uh, in, in short, uh, the city first became aware of uh, the Barkers planting certain trees within the Canterbury North Park in 2015. Uh, Two notices were sent out asking those to, trees to be removed. The Barker State didn't receive those. Um, we don't have a record of a you know, first class mailer or something re being returned. So uh, it's unclear what happened there. Uh, 2018, the issue came up again. Uh, I believe there were additional trees that the city became notified of, as well as the continuing presence of pro previously planted trees. Several more notices were exchanged. Um, and there was a conversation with the Barkers and the city forester uh, regarding which trees to be removed. Uh, the city's position is we were pretty consistent throughout all the notices. We identified certain trees to be removed, certain trees uh, were fine to stay. Uh, uh, the Barkers uh, understood that differently. I'll let them represent their own position there. Uh, there was an additional notice in 2019 and then in 2020, a separate issue arose regarding additional trees that were planted not in the park, but in the trail uh, adjacent and behind uh, their house. So the issues, uh, the mayor summarized kind of the procedures as an informal proceeding. Uh, the issues to be decided is basically what to do with these trees, how to handle them, whether to uphold the city administrator's decision or to modify it in certain ways. The city's recommendation, both from 
uh, city staff and from me is that the trees uh, be removed both in the park and along the trail. And by trees, I am referring to the specific trees that were identified in the various notices. Um, with my report, there were maps included and I tried to identify for you which of the trees were in the notices to be removed. Uh, staff is open to reviewing a plan for trees in the trail, um, subject to a prior review and approval by the city to make sure it's the type and spacing of trees that will not damage the trail, be consistent with how the city has treated other properties and trails, and no trees be planted in the park at all unless there's some circumstance where maybe a tree is donated and the city handles it. Um, and ultimately the city's position is, or city staff's position is that uh, city staff needs to retain the discretion to handle pruning, modifying, removing any trees and public property that it needs to. I've summarized the city's code and the relevant law in my report. Um, there's a lot of code sections in there. Primarily they state the same thing, which is a modification of public property without prior approval of the city is prohibited. As this mayor noted, this is not a criminal uh, proceeding. There's no citation, there's no intent to cite. This also is not a, an abatement proceeding where the city is requesting uh, you know, the city be re, um, paid back for any expenses the city incurs. It's a proceeding where the city is asking the Barkers to um, assist this activity and uh, not do it in the future and then allow them to either recover the trees if they're able, and I believe they've indicated they've done that with many of the trees, or the city will remove them at the city's expense. Um, two code sections, or the additional code section uh, I would like to point out is the city's development code regarding fences, walls, and hedges. Uh, this came up actually in the last council meeting with an individual who asked for a variance of some sort. Uh, houses that uh, are adjacent to a public trail have a limitation on how high their fences can be, and uh, the city has uh, required compliance with that. And that is one of the, the bases for the city's decision here. Both it's modifying public property, it's the, along the trail, it, it could result in this hedge, and um, there was no prior approval received by the city. Um, with that, Aaron, is it? Aaron, can I scroll through just to walk through the maps quickly and then I'll... Uh, just to where the maps begin. Yep, so uh, this is the uh, property at issue, uh, the Canterbury North Park along Canterbury Lane near 104th. Um, the Barker's resident. This is just pulled off the county's parcel map. Uh, just so you know, the, count, the county's parcel map is not always accurate exactly where it places the line. So if you see a fence, possibly in, don't base it just on that. This is a general indication of where everything lies. And then in the next map, you'll see a closer view of their specific house and the trail that runs kind of to the northeast of that, that blue outlined uh, map. And the next several maps show uh, aerial photos of the progression of the park uh, that you'll see. I've tried to outline in blue certain trees that were there prior to 2015, prior to the city becoming aware of this process. Uh, there were those two trees. In 2015, a number of trees were added. We'll slowly scroll through that. outlined in pink there, 2018, uh, additional trees. And then the, the final map, 2019, just shows which trees the notices from the city identified to be removed. And with that report, there are also the notices that the city uh, sent. happy to answer any questions that the council has at this point regarding the process or background where we're at now or how to move forward. So Rob I have a question. The city sent notices in 2015 
2015-2018 for removal of trees. I take it the city made no attempt to do anything. There was no citation. There was no action. I mean, I kept seeing notices where it says 14-day notice to do something, but the city never took an action on anything. There's been no other trees removed. Uh, no, that's not quite correct. They have removed certain trees from the area. Uh, I believe that was in 2018 after the 2015 notices. We believe the city sent out. They never received it. It's unclear what happened there. In 2018, notices were sent out. There was a back and forth and a discussion. Certain trees were removed. Um, the, our position and the barkers are a little bit different on what was communicated there. They believe they complied um, with what the city requested. Um, but no, there was no citation issued um, and then no city action immediately taken. I'm not sure what happened between 2015 and 2018. 2018, we had the long discussion. At 2019, the additional notice was sent. There was a, a separate petition involving that area that also put things on hold and then we're here now. So also in your notes, you mentioned that there's, and I see some form of communication where it talks about the Eagle Scout project happening in this area. What is the city's stance on the Eagle Scout project? Was it ever approved? Do we have emails backing up any communication based upon any tree placement with that Eagle Scout project? We're not sure exactly what project that referred to. I don't believe there was ever an Eagle project that was finally approved for planting in that area. Any other questions? Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barker, you're welcome to come up and together or separate. If if you, whatever you want, it's your 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 uh, your time. So we're all equally ignorant. Mr. and Mrs. Barker, would you mind turning your microphone on, please? The green button. There's a button that you push, and then a green light comes on. Testing, is that working? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but we do appreciate your time. We know this is an uncommon thing. It's uncommon for us. And, um, you know, that there's better things you could be doing, should be doing, but we do appreciate your time. This is an important thing to our family. And we're, we appreciate the opportunity to, to just come and maybe fill in some of the holes um, that, that, you know, have been presented tonight. And so, you know, first and foremost, when we moved to Highland, we knew we were moving next to a park. We knew we were moving next to a trail. We never expected that that was anybody's, um, you know, benefit or problem than, than ours. And, um, you know, through the history that we've had with, with the city, um, you know, I can say that we have tried to follow what we uh, understood was, you know, uh, agreements with the city and in, in how we've acted, um, but also recognized that the trees as it relates to the back of our um, property were done without consent. And so we want to sit here and be honest where we may have made mistakes, but also point out where we relied very much on the city and representations that were made in doing what we've what we've done. And then I will say that, you know, as as um, as is represented out represented by council that you know the, the council can either uphold but you know they also have the op opportunity to modify perhaps the outcome of this. And and I think that's our hope today is that there's some middle ground where you can realize that what we relied on from the city and we can realize what you know you are leaning on as it relates to code that you have. Um, and there's some reasonable, um, you know, middle ground that, that meets everybody's needs, um, you know, as, as we as we come out of here. And so I would I would say that's our hope. Um, we had previously met with council. Um, they are not here with us tonight. Phil Bailiff had previously represented us in this issue and um, has since uh, taken another job and was no longer able to do it. Um, I did mention in an email previous that we would have new council as it relates to this issue. Um, so Greg Scordis is somebody that's gotten involved with the neighborhood um, as this has become a kind of a neighborhood issue bigger than just, you know, these, these trees for us. Um, Greg's, you know, running for uh, Utah Attorney General and is somebody that's pretty active in the community and is, you know, wanting to take this on even pro bono. He's not here tonight because he wasn't able to, but, um, you know, kind of pending the outcome will depend on how he's involved and when he's involved his next steps, but um, council can expect to hear from him. Um, and our hope is that he's somebody that can simply help guide, you know, a productive discussion and, and, and something that's productive and not something that's combative, um, you know, and, and that this is something that can have a, a better outcome for, for everybody as we, as we proceed. Um, 
again, I know your time is short, so I'll get to try to get to the facts here. Um, going back to 2015, um, you know, to fill in the holes, it was asked about an Eagle project. So this project was initiated by an Eagle project um, of somebody in my neighborhood. They wanted to plant trees in the park, and it was noted that there were very few of them. And so they, um, because I was involved with the scouts, I made the call to the city, and um, and I don't have record, I don't have you know anything of who I talked to, um, but we we presented that we wanted to get a, an Eagle Scout project done, and um, and they said, okay, here's kind of how you can do it. Here's the trees that. Um, we would, you know, ask that you use being Austrian pines primarily with other evergreens. And, um, and so that's kind of how this initiated back in 2015. The Boy Scout who intended to do the project, it was denied with the board um, of Eagle Scouts, so he ended up doing something else. Um, but with that, I called the city again and asked if I could, you know, do what he had proposed to do in planting trees and um, was told that I could again do it if it was spaced out and also if we predominantly did the Austrian pine specifically which if you go to the park you'll notice that that's what's there and that's what I was told to do. Um, so we did do that and we did plant several, tr several trees where you've, um, where you've seen them. Um, and the city has provided notice that they had record of sending us notices thereafter. Um, I likely threw them out. I, my bill pay is on auto pay and I just, you know, oftentimes do not open mail, and so I'm not suggesting that anybody, anybody did anything wrong. Um, it was likely on my end where I just probably threw those notices out because I certainly would have addressed it had I, um, had I received those. In 2018, um, I did get a, another notice in the mail. I believe we would maybe planted another couple of trees and um, responded to that because it said, you know, you're not complying, there's an issue here, and, and we're asking you to address it. So. I immediately reached out to the city um, and they sent Josh out, our forester, and he was kind enough to take some time to come and meet with me and look at each tree. And from that, um, it, I was instructed that I needed to move two trees and um, immediately complied in doing so. So I put, I put one of the trees on my property. The other trees, which is a $300 tree, um, a lot of money to me and my family, I took and I gave to somebody who was landscaping their backyard. And I got a letter from that person, which I believe was included in the packet, Jeff Johansson, who lives in Highland, um, and also a picture of the tree that's now in his yard that's, you know, of equal growth that, that of those that are planted in the park. And, um, and so, you know, in, in my opinion, that's a story that I guess it adds up. Um, I, I, will, I think it would be strange for me to reach out um, to the city, to meet with the city, and then to do the opposite of what they had asked me to do. Um, misunderstandings happen, but that's a pretty big one, in my opinion. Um, and so again, you know, this, the expense of all of these trees that we put in is fairly significant. Uh, we certainly would have not done that if we did not have authorization from the city or understood that we had that. Um, and I, I certainly would have, you know, had I been instructed to remove those trees or lose them, that I would have complied and, and done that back in 2018. Um, so I felt like that was you know, an important thing to state. Uh, fast forward to 2019, um, as you know, we came and we um, asked, you know, in following the city ordinance, we, we made a um, petition to, to buy that property behind us on the trail. Um, that, that was denied and um, that was a fair vote and we understand that, um, but in that, um, in that council meeting, it was it was mentioned several times, or a couple things that stuck out. One one was the council, you know, said that they recognized that we had a problem on this trail, um, and several council members, even the ones that voted against us, felt that um, something was owed to us in some way, as far as what can we do to improve this, what can we do to fix this, or some sort of solution. Um, and that's on record where the you know several council people stated that. Um, well, a year later, nothing. Um, has happened or, or did happen. We never heard anything about it. This has been a very frustrating and difficult issue for several of our neighbors, as you may know, and are in these letters that we have to share with you today. Um, and so in choosing to plant the trees that we did behind our home, I did not go out, I recognize that, and seek um, special permission from the city. Um, candidly, I didn't believe that I needed that. As we look at um, every property owner along that trailway that has planted trees, um, and we've since walked the trails with our daughter who's kind of doing a home MTC right now. We have a lot of time on our hands to go out with her and 
just out of curiosity and at the direction of Craig Sport has kind of counted, you know, other properties that have done what we have done. And there's probably a hundred plus that have, have done this. And I think part of the issue that we have is um, as you look at these people that have taken it upon themselves to try to improve and beautify, um, you know, we think that's a great thing. And we, in, in, you know, planting these trees, we're not trying to do anything that we felt would, you know, be hurtful to the city in any way, but would maybe step in where they were unable to um, or unable to afford to or whatever the case may be and, and simply beautify and improve. Um, a couple of points I think that are important to make is it was mentioned that there was concern that we were creating a screen. Um, I don't know if you have the pictures in front of you, but we'd like you to have a chance to look at those um, and, and just use your own judgment if you feel that that's in any way accurate. Um, you know, these, these trees are spaced out at least six feet apart and, um, you know, are, are in no way able to, to create a screen for our, for our home. Um, and while, while Merrily's passing that out, I would, you know, ask you to thumb th through these pictures and, um, you know, and again, you know, we, we haven't been out to try to create headaches for people or say, you know, this is what we need, this is what we want. We're not going for yard of the year. If you look at those pictures, there's two pictures. There's one from um, our bedroom window and one from our living room window. And you can see the proximity that we have to that trail there. Um, you can also hopefully see the spacing of those trees. They're very spaced out. Um, they're very fairly small, and um, and again, they're just they're not they're not creating a screen. And while I while I said that you know before we didn't we didn't come here um, you know we knowingly came with a with a trail and a park on our side. Um, I guess we also hope that we came with a city that was going to be um, workable and reasonable as it came to how things were done here. Um, and we feel like the city council has, for the most part, done that. Um, but we do feel like this is, you know, a special, a special problem that maybe you might consider as we are, um, while it's a blessing to be on the park, it's also very difficult. And while it's a blessing to be on a trail, it's also very difficult. And if you look at those pictures of how close our, our, you know, even our bedroom window is to, to that trail. Um, you know, I don't know if you do have the opportunity to consider hardship or special circumstances when you say, you know, the Barkers really are in a unique and difficult position here, and maybe it would be appropriate for them to have some trees instead of weeds between, um, you know, between their trail and the, and the fence. Um, we did take precautions when we did, you know, research the trees that we could plant, these columnar trees. Um, they don't grow a deep root bed and, um, and they, don't, they don't grow out, they grow up. Um, and, and so that's, you know, that's, that's our stance on that. Um, I guess the final point, you know, and this just goes back to why I think Greg Scordis is getting involved is it's just sad that it's, it's trees. If you guys have gone to the park and looked at these trees, they are again in no, in, in no way a, a screen or an enclave as someone who complained about it said. Um, and we, we hope you could take the time if you have a minute to, to look at this. And I know you don't now, but that's why we're hoping that this can be considered as I know there's some future meetings and, um, and things that will be happening where you consider the trails and how to better address those. And so we're, we're hopeful you know, that that's, that's what happens as well. Um, and I guess our final point is just our, you know, the, the issue of, of how this is done with, you know, a complaint being made. And then if there's a complaint made, then, you know, you consider if, in, if, a, if a certain thing should be enforced. And we hope that, you know, you do deal, do due diligence about the person who made the complaint. We're not saying we know who that is, but we believe we do. Um, there have been a lot of issues um, that have gone as far as assault uh, in homes with this. Um, this particular person and it's concerning very much that um, you know they're concerned about our privacy and um, and how this is set up and it's sad that we we even have to bring that up um, very very sad yeah, for us it's not really relevant right that, okay that a complaint was made and yeah and we know that that's that that needs to be made private but um, again we our, our neighborhood <coughs> believes we know who who that would be um, so I think that's that's pretty much it from my side my my uh, may have some words, and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Unless there's, are there questions? I guess I can take from anything else. Might help. Can, you, can you tell us exactly? So, what? This is the tree. They're like they're little shrubs on the trail. 
What's the specific name of those shrubs? You know what those shrubs are? The we planted? Yeah. They're columnar spruce. So columnar spruce. Would it be columnar Norway spruce? I think it's Norway. Okay. I'm not sure. Would it be? Okay. I I actually had the opportunity to walk. Did you get them from J and J Nursery? Um, is that the one in? Uh, I think so. I don't know. Where do you? Is that from our tree? I, I just when I walked the trail, they were off down by the cool. by your tree. So that's just the that name. Might, of yeah, likely so. I just want to make sure that because you know, it was not attached to one of the trees. Yeah. It was just that down off the ground. So. Any other questions? Okay. All right. If something comes up and, and we need to ask a question, I'll just ask you to come back up to the podium because this okay, is recorded. Okay, then I'll, I'll make the emotional side of it if that's okay. okay. <laughs> I think I think I think representing the home, you know, as a mother, it's a big deal. And so, you know, we I even sent out to Kim saying it's amazing how much the city's going against us with trees. And I understand that's the government side. And I even invited Nathan, come inside my home. You're welcome to come actually inside my home when my husband's out of town so very often and I'm raising five kids inside this home. Privacy and safety is number one to me as a mom. And this has been an issue. Again, we did not know all the details of the home. We actually bought the home while we were living in California. And so we didn't know all these things. Again, that's not the city's fault. We, we bought the home. Um, but we did... You know, we are living here in, in hopes, just like every other homeowner, to improve their home, to improve it for their family, to make it a safe and private place. Of course, we all want to have privacy, as we should. We should be able to live there and feel comfortable, and that's been a really difficult thing for all, all these years and for everyone on that trail, which is why we presented that last year to even to purchase that. Um, and I think that that, you know, in, in talking to Nathan about this a little while ago, it was a safety issue from him, and, and it is, you know, we've, I've, I've watched children, you know, and, and adults, and I, eight out of ten people I don't know on the pathway. And so just having those trees just up a little bit in front of my, my windows that they can look directly into my bedroom, directly into my kitchen, directly into my front room, it has just given me just a little bit of sense of security. And I think that that's an okay thing. And every other person who has every tree on the trail has felt the same way. And I guess that's what's been confusing to us is because we're the one person someone's complained about. But I guess that's what Ryan was, was asking you is to consider the complaint. What is it that they're complaining against our home having trees versus every other home on our exact pathway? And that's, that's a frustrating thing to us because then we were told then in order for us to have anything done, then we need to then complain against every person. And I simply don't want to do that. I don't want to get that muddy. I'm happy for my neighbors to feel comfortable and safe and secure and to provide that beauty on the trail. It's a very big deal. Were you going to ask me something? Yeah, so on the Clemner spruce, is there, I've walked the trail. I didn't see any other similar spruce trees. You know, it's interesting as I, I've actually walked it several different times, just knowing that there'd been a complaint, I think back in the July area, I walked there. So I've probably walked it three times. When I went and walked, I noticed that there's more of a trees that are a little higher where, where you know, there's not, you know, there might be branches over the trail, but this appears to be more of a spruce, which you know I would call kind of a shrub that's going to fill in. I didn't notice that in in some of the areas, but maybe I didn't. Right, I I pretty well walked down all the trails, and I did again this morning. Is there areas that you saw that similar of uh, these uh, culminar Norway spruce were planted in this area? Okay, yeah. 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 Um, there are several areas just along the Highland Pass where there are there are similar evergreens, not not in this exact particular location, but there are numerous, and you know we can send you those pictures, you know, I, of, I just, of I, those. I just, so you're right, you're right. There's there's none on this, but I, I guess my question, you know, almost back to you would be, you know, the, is, is are we saying that the trees matter? Because well, there's trees, there's trees. No, so I, I reckon. Right? So that was one question. I did notice there's trees, but they seem to kind of go up and have branches sure. go over the top, where the, the Culminar Norway spruce, when I look it up, Mr. Google said that it will grow 30 feet tall and uh, 10 feet wide as it grows. And so, no. you know, well, that's, that's, I'm just going off what Mr. You also, Google you could also tells me. <laughs> no, and, I, and yeah, we're not, we're not, I, I don't think we're saying, you know, yes or no that, but I mean, you could obviously, you can, you can, you can trim that. To, and we're obviously to be not whatever, trying to plant a forest there. And as is. you can see how we did it, it was just trying to make it a little bit of some greenery. And, and I guess that's the question again, though, is that wasn't, is that not the, 
the confusing part of all of this is that they're angry that we planted a tree or that tree because what we heard is from the city from Nathan is that it's trees. And so we happen to know every other person back there has planted trees. And so that's why, why are we getting a complaint when we planted trees? It wasn't that we planted these trees, it was planting trees so back there. So why, why would you not plant these common air Norway spruces on your own property? That's a great question. So we actually, I guess we can't really see from there, but again, the issue of, of how they built this house, if we put them on our side, we actually wouldn't have a backyard. We, there's a portion of our yard that you come out, and if next time you come, you're welcome to peek over. It's very easy to see. Um, we really only have like maybe a, a foot and a half, two feet on that side. We I, I, I actually looked, and to me, you have the space in your own yard to plant these. We would, it would block our backyard from walking. We have a, we have a, a dugout. Basement, correct, you have so a dugout, would, but that's something you decide to put in that might eliminate I'd have put that. that was, we're not, that was we're not arguing, we're not arguing that. that. What we're saying is if we put those right where they are on the inside of our fence, we wouldn't be able to walk all the way around our yard. Because but that's your choice out. in your own yard. I mean, I'm just... Sure, but we also thought this would be a better choice of putting trees back there than a dirt pit. Yeah, and so one thing I, I did notice is it appears behind your home, and I don't know why this is. So I, you know, the, the, the trail, you know, I had another person walk with me, so I was asking, and it appears that behind these eight homes, to me, it felt like it was a little bit more narrow between where the fences were at and the trail. I, I actually measured it off. It appears to be between 19, 20 feet. But when I get down, like where you planted the, uh, those Norwegian spruces, it was a lot more narrow, and I don't know if the trail just narrows more into the property. I don't know if the fence is, is moved. I mean, I'm, I'm noticing, you know, that, yeah, it is true. When you walk down, there's other trees, but they seem to have more, you know, distance between the trail and where their fence is than where you're planning. I'm going, it did narrow, and I don't, I'm not saying that it, was your, it could be the way that the trail kind of takes a curve and narrows in in that area, but it seems to be a little more narrow in, in that nature, I mean, by several feet. Yeah, you know, it does come in right there. I think that's probably how the pathway was. We moved in when the fence was in there, so I'm assuming that that's just how they had planted the And I and I so as I walked it, I mean, I did notice that there were trees, and I don't know if the, did the city plant those trees or along those trails in Canterbury North, or was that res? I, I can tell some are residents. I can tell because they're are, different and trees. And actually, the one we do have a neighbor two down that does have a city tree that has grown into their and in, into their yard. They've had some problems with, but. Other than that, everyone else, I mean, I can tell you every person that has planted personally their trees. No, I'm, I would assume, but that's a question, I guess, for the city is these trees are along this trail. Is it, is it city planted? Was there certain criteria on planting trees? Josh knows more about specific ones, but there's a mix. If you look on the aerials, we look today. If you look on the aerials, there's a mix of trees that were left over from the development when they came through and uh, ones have been planted by residents throughout time. I actually noticed, it was interesting, the Johnsons used to own the property where you're at, and actually almost right where your house is at is where the Johnson home, there was a home up right by Freedom Elementary up on 10400, but then the, the, the son lived further back uh, in, and I was going, they've kept some of those older trees right there in the park. They're probably 50 years old that were there originally with the Johnson home, and so with the Marie Johnson, which was interesting. Um, Another question, I guess, while you're here is dealing with the soccer nets. There's a soccer net that's there, and I know it's been there for not, not just weeks, but months, maybe years. Is there a reason why there's a soccer net on the city property? We live, we, we live next door, and it's just something where our kids have, have put it. If, but we're happy to move if, it. No one's never no one's ever asked us to move it. If, but all if the they whole like neighborhood to, we will. uses it. Like people at the park come over. It's kind of, a, it's kind of more of a park net people always are playing on it from all over but yeah we would, if, if we were ever asked to do it we would use. certainly do it yeah. I, I just wasn't sure if that was a concern with the city did the city ever notice that there was a net there and they noticed fighting because of the net are we creating uh, a new issue josh here? you want to walk <laughs> over to Aaron? from four um, the guys have to move it when they mow the lawn. Um, technically, it is a liability. They're actually super cute to me. They know me well on Monday. They always wave to me. I go out and move it, or my kids move it on Mondays for them. They've always been really cute about it. 
But again, if we were asked to move it, we, yeah, we've never been we would absolutely do it. it. But it's just kind of been a public, excuse me. A I just wasn't sure if it was a city net or that. whose net it was. That was kind of. No, it's not the city's. No. But we've only had it like two years, I think, we got it, so. You know, I probably have other questions, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll defer to some other council members if they have them, because they might ask similar questions, but might answer some of mine. Hi, guys. Um, I talked to Mar Marilee about this, and I um, looked over the appeal, and I decided just to, I like to do my own research, and I reached out to quite a few neighbors on the trail along the park, and um, basically, I received the same answer from every single person. Um, the trees in the park, people feel like um, that's an annexation of um, your yard. They feel like they can't walk through it. They feel like, um, I think one gentleman said, we know it's city park, but I thought I'd walk through it just to see what would happen, and I felt like I was trespassing in somebody's yard. It's a problem. Um, every single person I talked to felt like um, it was a problem and that they felt like they could not go into that portion. I've even had somebody tell me that their kids um, were told they were not allowed to go into that area of the park. Um, and that's just from people that I've talked to. Um, I did reach out to quite a few in that area. Um, along the trails, I love your guys' trail. You know why I love your guys' trail? All the trees. It looks amazing. All those big um, trees. But I think the difference is a lot of the trees that are planted along that trail, um, there's flowering pears where they grow up, they're thin, and then they're out. And I think that's just a big difference is um, between those trees and the ones you have, like uh, Kurt said, um, the um, Norwegian spruce, it says it's 30 feet high, 10 feet spread, but it says it's a dense evergreen. Um, would I mind having trees there? No, I would like trees in front of your house. Um, I just like the trees that are along everyone else's house as well. And I'm just wondering, is there any type of, is there a code, is there something within our code or ordinance that says what trees can we have, what we can't? Um, that's something for Nathan. But my third thing is, this is part city fault also, because we just don't have any clear cut measures for you guys of what you can do, what you can't do. And I, I think that's our fault and something that I, really want to work on. Brittany and I have been going along the trails on our razor or whatever, hitting fences, it's true. Um, and we have really taken this as something seriously because this is confusing for you and this shouldn't even have to be an issue. Um, you should have a clear cut policy of what you can and you can't do and there shouldn't be confusion like this. And that's something that I wish was in place right now but is something that I want to make a priority that is in place so this doesn't happen to you guys and you're not having to face taking out thousands of dollars worth of trees. Well, Rob's gonna answer just to your second question whether there's a list. Uh, the city code does have a specific list. It's, it's a 236.10 or 16. There's a very long list of various uh, requirements, what is not and what is or can be permitted. Um, and evergreens are on that list as one that are prohibited along okay. public rights of way. Okay, so if they were to take out the evergreens, put a different tree in that was on that list, city approved, then everything would be fine? Yes, the decision Nathan said, we're open to it, just okay. submit a plan so we can review it and make sure it looks fine and will not impact the trail or anything else. So Rob, you're saying the city would have to approve before it's planted, correct? Correct. I, I wasn't sure, just if there's a list you can go plant or is it, hey, these are the approved trees, make a plan, submit to the city. It's going to the city administration, not city council, correct? Correct. Okay. It's, these are trees that are generally okay. Come to the city, submit your ideas, we'll review it and say, yep, what you want is fine, or it's not, or you know, you need to space them out more, or whatever terms and conditions we need to make it fit within the city's code and policy. I guess that's where it feels a little bit arbitrary is that I happen to know all of the neighbors haven't done that. So again, is it, are we just the ones that get to be made an example of? Because this has not been the process by any means. And we actually brought this up to Nathan before and he said no. So I just, I'm, I'm confused as to why the Barkers get to hold the brunt for the entire pathway of Highland. I, you know, probably for me is because there's been some notices out there. I mean, 
you know, that is probably already started. I mean, it appears at the start in 2015, 2018. I actually had another person with me that walked the trail today. I didn't say too much about where these extra, you know, the trees are in purple and green and blue. And I, I just kind of said, I said, you know, can you tell me where city property begins, where there's other, and they actually thought that that where all the trees were at was your property. And that was kind of interesting to me because I, I really was trying to be very objective and hey, because I saw the soccer thing. I thought, okay, maybe this is in a little area where they can practice soccer. It's a, not in the park. But that person really you know, opened my eyes and said, well, this, this is their property. And, and, I, and, and it, you know, it's kind of similar to what Kim was so saying. So half of it is. There's a, our properties there. And so, Kim, in, in answer to what you were saying about people making comments, I'm actually shocked because our area has become very, very public. People play on our area all the time, Kim. So that frustrates me, actually, very personally, because the park, it lends from the playground to our area and people do walk directly from there from the pathway they cut literally through my driveway so when they come through my driveway i may actually say did you know you're walking through my property so yes i absolutely would that gets really annoying we have people all the time who again are public out on the park who come and ask to use my bathroom ask for water they're constantly through there they come and use our soccer thing we put it out there to play with kids we're a family we want people around there but never once have we ever told people this is our park, our, our area. And the purpose of him planting them there, where we put them around, was for the water. Kids are always out of the water. We provided some shade and just some area of greenery. It wasn't to create just this is ours. And never once have we felt that way until we got these notices. Again, we did not see these notices in 2015. And so nothing, we thought we had done exactly what we were told. We planted them. Never saw anything when we got it in 2018. Josh stood in our yard, told Ryan that we could take two out because someone had complained, and so that was how it was. So we did it, thinking that was really funny. Someone complained about trees when we're trying to better where we live and for other people. And then, you know, to come back and say this now of the same person complaining, it just it is it is frustrating that the same person complains about trees when all we're trying to do is provide privacy in our home. If there was an issue with the type of tree, that could have been addressed, but all it was told was it was a complaint of anything being planted behind our home. Well, and, and to that point, you know, we did come and we, we met with, with Nathan and Rob earlier, um, and it was told to us that it was either, you know, the trees stay or the trees go and there were no other options. And we had, and our attorney who was representing us said, well, can they plant other trees? And we were told, no, we couldn't. And, and that's where we felt that this was becoming, you know, Very kind of a discrimination issue, right? And um, and something that we just well, regardless of what was said, fight, right? you've heard what was said today, which is those trees are specifically prohibited right. along yes, and, and right away. And, and with, with that being said, like I said, we, we like I said when I when we first came, we're willing to comply. We're not looking to, Understood. to get around that. Um, uh, no, I, I was just saying that when we came um, to meet before with with Nathan and Rob, you know, the question was asked if we took these trees out, could we put others in? And you know, we were told at the time that that was not an option, that it was either you know, these go and there's no other options for what you can do. Um, or, or maybe we could have you know, avoided being, being to this point, um, probably not because of you know, some of the other trees. But you know, again, we, like I said tonight, we, we come knowing that um, you know, if there's something that's not in compliance, if, if there's not a special circumstance, um, you know, we understand and we, we willingly comply. And, and move those, and it would be our hope that it could be modified in a way that, you know, we could do some additional planning there that would um, be consistent with the, the rest of the homes on the trail. I, I just have a quick comment. I, I've spoken with people also, and I don't know who meant that, that comment to you about the trees. I don't think anyone dislikes trees. I, from the comments that I've heard, they're concerned about presumptive ownership. And so that, that's the problem. It's not the fact the trees exist, it's the, the concept of presumptive ownership. So it, kind of like what they said to Kim. So. Sure, and, and I mean, I'm you know, just, just throwing ideas out there in, in hopes that that's what we're doing here is problem solving is, you know, is there a way it could be solved where maybe some of those trees are moved and some of them stay? I mean, they're, they're trees that have, you know, been there for, for many years and I, I mean, you know, they say the, the, the best time of pl to plant so, a tree was 10 years ago. Yeah, so, just, that's kind of, so Nathan, let's... I don't know if that's an option. For if they move these, these, these spruces over into their property, 
it still might create a hedge. Is that an issue with our code because it would be along a fence along the trail? Or is that something they can move it into their property to do? Because I don't want to take, yeah, move it over to the other fence, so you have well, another problem. The question is, a lot of people do, and even our neighbors have these massive lavender bushes that are an absolute mess. And hedge. I agree with you. I and do agree. So, with that. and again, they should. They're on the pathway, so that that's nice for them to not have people Give looking into their home. So. Okay, can if they move the spruces, let's assume right now it's on the north side of the fence on city property. They move those spruces and it goes in their property, and now it's on the south side of the fence, but it's on their. Can they have that? type of foliage there along, I mean, and it is true, there are other neighbors, as I, maybe not specifically down that little area you're at, but as I go down, I call it the T down, you know, you go down your trail and you T to go down, there are other homes that have kind of put little shrubs behind their fences. Not, not unless they're, they, like you said, they're kind of more of a little, I don't know, like little flowering pears or things that way. Because I do, I, I have walked where you've been back on your deck. And I do agree, it has to be somewhat encumbering that someone's right there walking while you're sitting on your deck. Because you do have a nice deck that's off the back of your house. So I, I mean, I recognize that, that your space is, 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 is right there. It, I, I actually asked the city, why did we allow a home to have the corner of the property be within 10 feet of a, of a, a trail? Stupid. <laughs> I, I, I just, so. He built that really poorly. But yeah, I mean, while he's looking for that, um, you know, we have various uh, letters from neighbors who feel differently than what Kim said. So for what that's worth, we can give those to you too. As they're looking at that, my very first, when I came and saw the trees in that little, if you want to say private area, very first I thought, well, that was kind of nice. They were willing to help improve <laughs> the city property. But then, Kim, as you mentioned, there has been one or two others uh, that, you know, and I was really surprised with the person I was walking with today where they went right to it, that, oh, that's not a welcoming area, that's not, that's not the city area. And I thought, well, I guess, you know, going and planning things to maybe improve some of the city property can also be perceived as cornering off city property and, and blocking it, you know. And, you know, I, I did notice where the soccer was at, that if I was coming down the cul-de-sac down that trail, there was no way really to kind of get over into that city property because that, it's not a small soccer net. I mean, it's, it's probably a good 15 feet wide. It was kind of blocking any area to be able to get over to the city property. And I wasn't sure, you know, it was just, it was interesting because I had a different perspective as I was looking at it this morning. It, it's, just, it's just on the side by the trees, just so the kids can play there. Um, but again, had, had there been an issue brought up with this, like when we met with Josh a couple years ago to take out certain trees, so there wasn't that feeling after we had already planted them, or in 2015, after there had been, you know, they claimed to have sent a letter, but no one came to our home. Nobody's approached us. We, apparently they sent those notices, but then five years go by. And I guess that's the frustration is we've let five years of growth happen with these trees, and now saying to take them out will really do a lot of damage out there. And so I guess that's the question is, you know, has this been such an issue five years ago? Why didn't anyone come knock on the door? Like you said, there was 14-day notice you said on that. But we, like, we get the bills, you know, there's certain bills we know we're on bill pay and you throw them away. So had that been an issue through all these years, why didn't someone come approach us through all these various, you know, all these years in between? It's unfortunate because now these large trees are there and to take them out will do, you know, a that amount. very open with you, what, what kind of hurts? And, my, and, my, and I'm just going to, is that I recognize there was an Eagle Scout project, but it sounds like it didn't go forth and maybe you got a hold of the city, but then I heard from you that even later on you still went and planted more trees. The city notified you. So I, do I believe the city notified you in 2015? Yes, I don't, we can't show that you received the notices. Then 2018 that you did, and then in 2020, you go and plant more trees behind the trail. So to me, I, I'm just going, okay, I, I'm not, I'm having a hard time buying in that you, you're a victim here. I'm just, just being I'm very straight. I'm not worth saying that we're a victim at all. I'm saying had, had Josh not stood on our property and told us which trees we had to remove, which we did. We didn't touch anything since then. And we planted trees based on last year after various campaigning against us buying the property, if you recall that. We've had city councilmen come and actually campaign against us after that's your own ordinance. So it's extremely frustrating. Um, but then to have that taken from us, then all, asking all the other neighbors they just gone da back and beautified it. As you've seen, people have full-on drip systems and landscape to the 
end of their property, or not their property, right to the pathway. So assuming because nothing's been done in over a year that was promised to us, the last words we heard when we walked out was, we will solve this, you guys deserve this, you live here, we're gonna make this work for you. This is a very big problem for people of North Canterbury. Of our eight homes that we had to make this such a difficult thing. So for us to plant trees, it's extremely frustrating that we're trying to provide something because we don't have privacy anywhere. So I just feel like we're just getting shoved out, which perhaps that's the, the idea here, but it's extremely personal and it's extremely frustrating. I can appreciate the feeling there. Any other questions for the Barkers? We just, then I, I'll go ahead and sit down and we'll let the council deliberate and make their decision. I just think, is there a way for, on the side, I mean, I love trees as many trees as we can possibly have in a park is a great thing. Is there just a way, and maybe this is directed at Josh or Nathan, um, that we can remove some of the trees, keep some of the trees, just to make it so that it is more inviting and everyone feels like it is city property and not the Barker's property. If there's a way to do that, um, that would be great. And then on the flip side with the trails, just give you know them the list of approved trees and then they can work with the city to put in those approved trees. So I, I think on, on those on the trail tr trail, um, what, I, what I believe staff has done is gone through and figured out <coughs> proximity to the trail and looked at, at, at patterns and uh, definitely willing to have you come back with a plan from, from the list of trees that are allowed and, and, and they can provide guidance as to distances between the trail and, and the trees, um, and, that, and that's a possibility. So then you, you'd go back through, yeah. the, and with respect to the park, I, 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 I you know, the, we have conflicting reports, and it, it's your call. I, I think I would, def if it was me voting, I would defer to what the, uh, the, what the park staff recommends and then because it's it is our property and and I would just say we'll do whatever it's it, it's, it's not um, you know we're not charging anybody anything um, once we identify which ones we're going to take out we could uh, we could offer the barkers a chance to take them if they want and get some of their money back somehow um, but anyway that would I think that would fall in with um, with with uh, that's where there's flexibility. That's my opinion, but you're the council. You can. You know, I, I like what Kim's suggesting. Is I I think that the those Norwegian spruces along the trail, maybe there's a better option that fits in with what's already there, and and so. When I, when I look at the Norwegian spruces, their, their, their purpose of the Norwegian spruce is actually to fill in the block. I mean, that, that's what they're, really, they're known for as a tree. They grow fast and they fill out the, the, for blockage. And so I'm not sure this is the correct tree along the trail, but I'm not against if the barkers want to look to see if there's some trees on the approved list to come back. And so I'd ask the staff, because it's not something to come back to see council, that they, if it's there and they can see that it would work and not damage the trail area, that they would work with the barkers to be flexible. I think, Kim, coming back to your question is what trees or, or, or shrubs that might be the, the evergreens that are there in that little park area that are, we have some in blue, we have some in green, we have some in, in, in purple. I have a hard time saying, well, what should go and what should stay? I think, you know, we have Josh Castleberry that's with the city. Maybe he should kind of help give us some guidance. So, so council, what we, what we would suggest is uh, the trees in the parks that they, uh, that the Barkers identify any ones that they would like to keep themselves. And then uh, the staff could go replant them. Don't know if they'll survive or not, but they can go replant them. So Nathan, what in you just park. mentioned, there's some trees here that's on city property. Yep. The city staff would go, and if, they, if the city staff administrated doesn't feel like that, they'll, they'll, they'll dig them up and try to go plant them in other parks or other areas. In, in, in Canterbury the, Park. Okay. So the ones that are in blue are the ones that we believe we said we, we should stay, and the rest were the ones that were to go. 
So if any okay. of those that were identified for removal they want to keep and we plan on their property, they can do that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other ones we will try to replant. This is a little bit of the fresh frustration. So he, he, every time we talk to Nathan, it's just all or nothing. And so, and, and I guess that's one of the questions of the evergreen is the reason we even looked for, you know, a suitable tree and, and what we were told and taught about the columnar is that it goes straight up and that would just give us a little bit of that protection. Because in the winter and people are going up and when we don't have any leaves out there, it's beautiful right now. But in the winter time and when it, we lose all the trees and it's completely bare. And again, we have everyone coming through right into our windows again. And that's, that's the point, is that we're trying to just find a way to just kind of protect our windows and our home and just create a little bit more privacy, especially as it's so weedy and ugly out there. And so, yeah, if there's some way to make it work where we can have some trees or do something, but I guess that's our frustration. So, like, so you're trying, because in your statement, you said you're not trying to create a screen, but the real purpose of those trees was to create a screen. We're trying to create some privacy. Sure. I understand. I mean, I agree why that's so why our words keep getting twisted as if we're doing something wrong. But, and I guess that's, I even invited Nathan in this is, you know, he doesn't even live in Highland. So it's frustrating to have someone making a decision where we live. And he says he bikes down the pathway. And that's awesome. When we have a volcano pit right at the end of the, the pathway, we painted it. But then there's a volcano pit where kids are breaking their arms, which we did have. If you you're you're correct. Year. There is a good little pit and in that in that trail. But this is what's this frustrating. Needs to is stay on the subject this, this is the subject is that we are trying to create safety, privacy where we live. We live there, so yes, oh, we get it. We are trying to provide some sort of protection from my bedroom window, and I, I'm having a hard time with whoever complains saying that that is a negative thing. The rest of the, the city trees, if those need to be moved, yes, but I, again, like I, I appreciate Kim trying to at least, let's just try to make something work. I don't know why we have to say, let's dig it all out, have holes, and then behind our home, we're just gonna have a dirt pit. I'm not sure how that's benefiting anyone anywhere. That's not what I heard. So what I heard is the No, I'm, correct, I, I'm grateful no, for her to say no, that. What I heard was that the trees that are there on the trail need to come out because they're not on the list of what we can put on public right-of-ways. That you can work with staff and come up with a plan for trees that match the ones that are allowed and we'll work with you to make sure they go in the right place so they don't damage trail or anything that might be underneath the trail, water systems, water lines. And then the, the park would be up to our park staff to decide which ones stay and go, and then we'll give you the opportunity to keep them or have them relocated somewhere else. That's, is that, am I summarizing correctly what was? Yeah, and I guess I'm just saying that on the park side, um, I mean, if we can keep some trees there, just I just wanna make sure that it's inviting and that people don't feel yes. like it's, they're part of the land. But if there are certain trees that can stay and still have that feeling of openness and that this is city property, then, then by all means, let's, Let's work on that. And I, and I think there were trees that could say. I, I support Kim. I, I what she just so, stated. I, I, I agree with Ms. Paul. <laughs> what we, we need to have some kind of a motion to, to end this item and, and move on. So is there a motion somebody? I move that the city council recommends that the Barkers remove the trees along the trail, which are the columnar Norwegian spruces that they then bring back a plan for that's on the city approved list of uh, trees and works with staff upon uh, that that plan and then there, there's also some uh, dealing with the trees that are here along over by the stream that uh, the that the city staff specifically our parks department earmarks what they would like to have keep there that makes it feel that that is still city property and not in closing it off uh, and then work with the barkers if they would like to take those trees personally and go and move them on their own property or dispose of those trees and how they'd like. And then I think we have a date that at least by, I think October 1st, those that are not removed, that the city staff, our parks department then could go and move them elsewhere in the Canterbury area. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, I'm, I wanna ask a quick question. So do we have a list of trees that people can plant next to the trail? 
I yes, believe we, we have a, a list of trees that could be planted on right of way. Uh, According to what we understood, Scott, Scott, yes, that there was a list to help them know what trees to do. I'm hoping I'm correct, as we're, we're just following what you guys said. <laughs> Is that in the development code or municipal code? Uh, Rob, do you want to? I'd like to see that list personally. Development code, um, no, city code, 2 uh, 36 160K. And you can go through, there's a very, very long appendix and list of trees and descriptions in there. And those are ones that can go in right adjacent to right away. Is that right? It specifically calls out certain trees as not permitted. You know, it says the following species are not to be planted on any public right of way in Highland. These trees exhibit the following characteristics that are damaging, and it kind of goes through a long list of those. And there are other trees that are, these are the type of trees that could be better for this kind of thing. And then it's come get a permission from the city first. <coughs> okay, so are we ready to vote? Um, does this need to be a roll call vote, Rob? Or So we're just all in, in favor of the motion that was made. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay, that motion passes four to one. Thank you. And with that, um, you want to take a short, like one minute break if somebody needs to adjust anything, get a drink or whatever, and then we'll start our council meeting about seven minutes late. <laughs> 